Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Renee and this is New Angel Tarot. Today's video is going to be Chapter 8, The Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. Chapter 8, The Seals of Saturn Hidden Within the Tarot. Pictured below is Saturn's magic square revealing the seal of Saturn. I'm just going to hold that up really briefly. So this is the seal of Saturn and the magic square. And when we talked before about adding one, two, three, four, five, <clears throat> six, seven, eight, nine, uh, add stuff to 45. Have you ever laid out all the tarot cards on the floor or on a table? I have made a tarot grid that includes all the minor and major arcana, excluding the court cards. It is in this grid where you will find the first seal of Saturn, which leads one to believe that there are more seals hidden throughout the tarot. This grid contains the 40 minor arcana, each of the 22 major arcana cards, the 40 as well as the 22 are very significant in Kabbalah. For example, there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. In relation to this, each major arcana's card is illustration portrays the spiritual aspect of the corresponding Hebrew letter it is assigned to. The number 40 is significant because it is the numerical value for the Hebrew letter Mem, meaning water, relating to the concept and timing of spiritual cleansing. For instance, in the book of Genesis, the earth flooded for 40 days and 40 nights. This was a time period where the earth experienced a large-scale baptism. The tarot grid arranges 62 numbered cards in their proper order by starting at the top and working its way down. It begins with the least valued to the highest valued card, all according to the value of each card's number and suit. The specific order that has been based on each card's value is in direct accordance with the system set aside by the Order of the Golden Dawn, who follow a system based off Western Hermetic Kabbalah. Consequently, the creators of the Rider Waite Smith Tarot deck happen to be members of the Golden Dawn Society. The tarot suits are arranged in an order that coincides with the Tetragrammatron, also known as the four letter name of God in Hebrew. Yod -Hey -Vau -Hey. Each of the four letters of Yod -Hey -Vau -Hey are associated with the four elements fire, water, air, and earth, specifically in this order. In addition to this, each tarot suit coincides with one of the four elements as well, which will also follow the same order. For instance, wands correspond with fire, cups with water, swords with air, and pentacles with earth. And it is in this particular order that the cards are arranged on the grid, working their way down through the four suits in their proper order from least to greatest value. Located directly below the suited cards of the minor arcana are the 22 major arcana, which are arranged in according to the value of their Roman numerals position from 0 to 21. As revealed here now, the seal of Saturn is hidden within the tarot grid. The seal can be found when you draw a line following the rising and descending numbers on the cards. Look at the picture on the previous page for reference. I'm just holding that up so you can see. The aces, the wands, the cups, the swords, the earth. 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10, 1 to 10. And then Magician all the way down 22 Major Arcana to read it to the world. And this is the seal running through. So, As revealed here now, the seal of Saturn is hidden within the tarot grid. The seal can be found when you draw a line following the rising and descending numbers of the card, as I've shown you in this picture on the book. Starting from the middle card on the top row, number six, which is six of wands, and then moving down to the next row diagonally to the number five, then number four, then number three, and ending at the high priestess card that is assigned to Roman numeral two. 
From here, return to the starting point at the top of the grid, going back to the Six of Wands, and then work your way downward diagonally, this time in the opposite direction from the number six, down to the number seven, then eight, then nine, and ending on the Wheel of Fortune card, which is assigned to Roman numeral 10. Repeat this formula just as before, but this time start at the bottom of the grid, beginning with the Devil card assigned to the Roman numeral 15. The number 15 when reduced is 1 plus 5 equals 6, which mirrors the starting point at the top of the grid. So starting from the Devil card, repeat the same steps as before that were used going down the grid, but this time you'll be working your way upward in the opposite direction. After having completed these steps, you will have formed two overlapping Vs, which form two Xs touching each other, and create a diamond, or rhombus, in the centre. To complete satin seal, draw a line directly through the middle of the two Xs, one side of the grid to the other. This line should pass straight through the diamond, and as a consequence will form a median line that divides the tarot grid into two halves. With there being two rows, with there being three rows above the line and three rows below it. When you add up the numbers of each card included in the grid seal, which are located at each of the seal's six points, you get the sum of 45. The 45 just so happens to be the numerical value for the Hebrew name Zazel, known to be the spirit of Saturn. Likewise, the intelligence of Saturn is Agiel, and it shares the same numerical value of 45. The six points on the seal add up to 45, and the cards included are the Devil, the High Priestess, the Two of Cups, Six of Wands, Ten of Cups, and lastly, the Wheel of Fortune. Therefore, it gives you 15 plus 2 plus 2 plus 6 plus 10 plus 10 equals 45. Furthermore, 45 is also the sum of the numbers inside the magic square of Saturn. There are three tarot cards that contain a hidden seal of Saturn within them, and they are the Hierophant, the Devil, and the Ten of Pentacles. These seals, which are placed in specific and significant location on these particular cards, reveal deeper insight into the mysteries that have been concealed within the tarot for far too long. The seal's purpose is to provide protection from Saturn's malefic influence, while simultaneously sealing in its magical essence. Saturn is associated with ruling over time, restriction and karma. Saturn constantly emits dueling waves of energy that slow down time between cause and effect, interrupting the manifestation process by wearing away at us with harsh judgment, restriction, frustration, doubt and fear. The seal of Saturn acts as a protective shield from the planet's malefic force, allowing a practitioner of the tarot to not be restricted by the time it takes for a desire to manifest itself into reality. They are able to see results very quickly, like magic. In addition to these seals, the tarot also contains other similar planetary applications, some of which involve a specific combination of cards which act as keys specifically to help one manifest prosperity. Moreover, the tarot grid holds the map key, which pinpoints where to find one's path of enlightenment based on their zodiac sign. These paths are located on each of the grid's columns that lead down from the top to the bottom of the grid and lay out the path to enlightenment for each zodiac sign. Each path incorporates wisdom and practical advice that will help guide an individual with the insight they need in order for them to begin working on themselves in hope of transforming their ego nature. The formula for finding one's correct path works the same for all signs of the zodiac. The first step is to establish what sign the individual is born under, and yet everyone is governed by three signs, their sun, moon and ascendant. All three signs are important to learn and work together to influence our personality and shape our character. It is important to understand all three in order to truly know thyself. Once a specific sign has been established, figure out the ruling planet for that sign, after which the corresponding sephira on the, on the Kabbalah tree of life attributed to that particular planet. 
Consequently, the number of the sephira is the number of the path found on the tarot grid. Let's use Aries for example. Aries is ruled by Mars, which is associated with the fifth sephira, Gavura, and therefore all number five cards are located in the fifth column, which will forge the path that an Aries needs to take in order for them to reach spiritual enlightenment. Getting to know your three signs and then applying them to the path to enlightenment formula to each one of them will elevate your awareness and soul vibration as you strive to better yourself. It will help you gain a deeper and more well-rounded understanding of your unique personality as well as uncover aspects of your shadow nature. The point of reaching enlightenment is to establish a connection with the higher self aligning you with your destiny, giving you a sense of purpose and direction, filling you, filling you with the confidence needed to reach your goals and make your dreams come true. The key to prosperity is hidden in the centre of the tarot grid, found within the cards that are placed along the median line which passes through the seal of Saturn's diamond. Before disclosing the exact location of this key and its purpose, I must first explain the significance of the diamond or rhombus formed within the seal of Saturn. You must first be able to comprehend, comprehend the significant relevance of it as it pertains to occult magic and ultimately wish making. Similar to the Vesica Pisces, the diamond or rhombus is a portal gateway through which one traverses back and forth between the third and fourth dimensions and from which one brings forth their desire from the astral realm of the 99% reality over into the 1% physical reality, the material world. Another way of putting it, it's, it's a gateway where which desire from the macrocosm is drawn down into the microcosm where we manifest it into the material world of matter. It's a womb that its main purpose and energy is the basis of creation in the universe. It is a doorway that acts as a bridge between spirit and form, matter and antimatter, the infinite void and all matter. This diamond is the centre of the seal, it looks similar to a keyhole or an eye, and thereby is attributed to the third eye. Subsequently, the seal of Saturn rules over the Sephira Bina, which corresponds with the third eye. Not to mention the devil card associated with Capricorn, who was ruled by Saturn. Just so happens to be assigned the Hebrew letter Ayin, meaning I. Through its esoteric symbolism, the devil card's illustration portrays the empowerment obtained when activating the third eye. The letter Ayin looks similar to the latter, Latin letter Y. It is said that the letter Ayin has two eyes located each at the top of its two points or Y tips. The right eye sees positive potential while the left eye sees negative judgment. If you were to place two mirrored images of the Ayin side by side, it would form the letter Shin, which looks similar to the letter W. The shin created by the two mirrored ayins correspond with the third eye, and it is in this third eye that sees the spirit. So that's been mirrored on the right, and that's the ayin on the left. When placing a mirror over these three particular tarot cards, which all contain a hidden seal of Saturn in them, it reveals deeper hidden meaning. For instance, in the devil card, the devil is seen raising his right hand in forming the gesture of the El Shaddai, placed by priests during the Bigrat Kohanim. This hand gesture involves the use of two hands, which together form the letter Shin. Hence, Shin for Shaddai, meaning Almighty God. You can see here. Yeah. 
there is a mirror placed to mirror the hand and the devil card. For this reason, when using a mirror, we are able to display a mirror image of the devil's hand, which then forms the gesture used for raising of the hands, priestly blessing, referred to as the Bikrat Kohanim, which is properly made with two hands instead of one. Traditionally, the priests bless the people every morning after the sacrifice at the temple. Today, it is offered during Jewish holidays, although many synagogues and Christian churches end their service with this blessing as a benediction. This blessing is found in Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. The Lord blesses you and keeps you. The Lord shines his face upon you and is gracious to you. The Lord lifts up his face upon you and gives you his peace. With further examination of the picture above, you will see that the mirror image creates a heart shaped above the devil's hands. This is significant because the letter Shin is attributed to the heart. Furthermore, it is revealed in the devil card that one must raise their kundalini energy in order to activate the third eye, which is only made possible after having first opened up one's heart. Moreover, the devil card is assigned to the Roman numeral 15. When reduced, 1 plus 5 equals 6, and the number 6 coincides with the 6 sephira tipperet, which is ruled by the sun and attributed to the inner sun and heart chakra. Thus, by opening up one's heart is key to opening up the third eye. And this is when the connection to the Christ consciousness is achieved. Jesus, Yeshua, responds within with the letter Shin. For example, when the Shin is placed inside the middle of the Tetragrammaton, yod heh vau it forms the name Yeshua. From this picture, you can see that the shin coincides with spirit. Also known as the fifth element. As mentioned earlier, the three eyes of Ayin are as follows. The right eye sees the positive potential, the left eye sees the negative judgment, and the third eye that sees spirit coincides with the concealed shin. The judgment card is assigned to the letter shin, and the spiritual meaning of shin is portrayed within the card's illustration. For instance, depicted in this card is the angel Gabriel, who is walking up the dead from outside their coffins and delivers them good heartwarming news. She offers them a chance of redemption and eternal salvation. The name Yeshua means salvation. The people were dead inside their hearts and Gabriel delivered them to the good news that Jesus was going to be crucified on the cross the following day and that he would die for their sins, which meant they could now have an eternal life and thus another chance to repent for their sins before they died. This was the good news attributed to Good Friday. This news caused people to be overwhelmed with joy and it melted their hardened hearts. This is symbolized here by the snow-tipped mountains melting and this causes the valley below the mountains to flood. The flood waters rising contributes to the coffins rising up the ground and floating away. You can see here judgment card this melting of the heart allows one to flow along the kundalini stream as they ascend up the chakras towards the third eye pictured here is an esoteric description depiction of Hermes Trismegistus conveying hermetic principles through the language of symbolism. His body and arms form the seal of Saturn, with its diamond in the center. You will notice the mirrored image displayed the opposite night and day, 
With further examination, you will notice that Hermes has one of his eyes shut while the other is opened, which further reinstates the third eye symbolism and the attempt to obtain deeper, deeper esoteric knowledge by becoming in tune with the spirit. In the centre of the seal inside the diamond is the Crusader's cross depicted in the Judgment card, a card pertaining directly to Christ and the Sacred Heart. It relates to the concept of opening up one's heart as the means to connect to the Father, which is achieved after having activated one's third eye. Achieving this connection to the source allows you to rise above the ego and float on a higher plane of conscious awareness. This is the image of Hermes Trismegistus and the inverted triangles forming essentially the Star of David and being mirrored as above. Pictured here is an esoteric description of Hermes Trismegistus conveying hermetic principles through the language of symbolism. His body and his body and arms form the seal of Saturn. Oh, I've already read that page. Beg your pardon. This ancient Egyptian pictograph portrays the concept just mentioned. If you pay closer attention to the shape formed by Horus's and Set's arms you will see the resemblance of the Hebrew letter Shin. But what is more, that each pair of arms is shaped similar to Ayin, mirroring each other. Their arms and heads come together and form a Shin. These mirrored Ayins, forming a Shin, create a pictograph of what appears to be a boat or an ark. This boat will allow one to float above their ego nature. Also, the boat resembles an eye with a pupil in the center. This pupil has the crown on top, suggesting enlightenment. So I'm just showing a picture of the boat. And again, you know, if you guys want to get this book, You'll be able to see all the pictures and follow along a little bit more clearly. Now, now let's take a mirror concept one step further and build upon what has been presented so far. It has been showed the letter a yin, meaning I, is assigned to the devil card, which has hidden within it a seal of Saturn. And this seal's diamond is considered to be a gateway into the third eye awareness. Time now to apply what we know so far about the esoteric symbols on the devil card and use them towards the discovery of new hidden secrets found with a mirror. With this in mind, place a mirror directly along the horizontal line that passes through the middle of the diamond and in doing so will reveal more hidden mysteries. Pictured below is the hidden eye found within the devil card located in the centre. So this is the seal of Saturn over the devil card and this is the mirrored image when we put a mirror over the top. There are three cards which have the hidden seal of Saturn on them. By applying this mirror method, we will be able to reveal all three eyes hidden inside the centre of the diamond of each card's seal. And then we can see it again. And then on the next page, you can also see all three cards that he's talking about. So we're looking at the Hierophant, the Ten of Pentacles and the Devil card all have the three 
series of Solomon. Essentially, the spiritual, the material, and the path in which we are to go from spiritual and ascend. The Hierophant, the Devil and the Ten of Pentacles all contain a hidden seal of Saturn. I'm also going to show you this before I move forward, so I don't have to go backwards. You might recognise that image. The hidden eyes surrounded with the light rays found within the Hierophant card located directly in the middle of the card. The hidden eye found within the Ten of Pentacles card is when the two heads in the middle merge as one. The purpose of activating the third eye is to free the mind. Our yin has a numerical number value of 70. Each of these three cards have an eye concealed within them which each gives us 70 times 3 equals 210. The number 210 is very significant here because it is the exact number of years the Jews were enslaved in Egypt. Ultimately, it is a metaphor for the mental slavery. If we take responsibility for our own actions and repent of our sins, we are able to open up and purify our hearts thus allowing the kundalini life force to rise within our vessel and activate the third eye. This activation connects us to our salvation, our salvation from ignorance. Our third eye is connected to the fourth dimension. It enables us to perceive other dimensions and realities. It is an ancient biological device made of stardust that assists in navigating our dreams in our ethereal body that guides us towards the reality of time travel, telepathy, intuition, and other psychic abilities. Another religious theory that suggests the pineal gland is our true inner Christ. Sorry. Another religious theory suggests that the pineal gland is our true inner church or place of connection and worship. In the Christian religion, there is a Bible verse that states, The light of the body is in the eye, therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body be full of light. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. This verse can be interpreted as relating to the soul of the third eye. In closing, there is yet another secret to reveal regarding the method of using a mirror found when placing a mirror vertically over these three cards. By doing so, it forms a pair of identical images that when placed next to each other, disclose deeper hidden understanding each card possesses and also exposes how all three cards forge together to convey one combined philosophy. So far, you have been shown the hidden all-seeing eye when the mirror is placed horizontally over the card. But allow me to reveal the secrets shown when the mirror is placed over these cards vertically. Eyes are accredited as being twins, similarly the way the Gemini twins are symbolized, where one is good, the other evil. Whereas one eye sees the positive while the other sees the negative. This aspect of duality hidden within these cards can be brought to light when utilising this mirror method. With a mirror placed vertically down the middle of the card, the Hierophant reveals a pair of twins looking up in hopes to see the positive represented by the Hierophant's two hands aimed upward with each having two fingers pointing toward God. This hand gesture is symbolic of Jesus' divine nature, being both divine and human at the same time. When using the mirror method with the devil card, it reveals two Eves who are both turning their heads and looking away from the raised hands that form their El Shaddai gesture with the fear of receiving any negative repercussions. And lastly, the mirror image applied to the Ten of Pentacles displays two twin old men gazing upon the philosopher's stone 
which is attributed to the pineal gland, aka the third eye, which enables one to see the spirit once it is activated. As you examine these cards closer, you will notice the wording of the two cards' titles have been altered and adding its mirror image, adding to its mirror image. For instance, the Hierophant has been changed to the air, similar term air refusing to referring to Adams, the Adams in the card. Adam is the Hebrew word for man and can refer to mankind. In the scriptures, the righteous are promised what they will become heirs to all that God has. Another thing to take into account, according to Hermeticism, the male is considered to respond to the positive polarity and therefore Adams in the Hierophant card convey this particular polarity aspect. Alternatively, the female Eves depicted in the Devil card, encompass the negative polarity. You will notice the Devil card's title has now been altered to say the, which is the astrological symbol for Gemini and represents the twins. Adam and Eve can be considered as being twins because Eve was created from Adam's rib, therefore the same DNA. Eve was created by God to be Adam's soulmate and they shall be one flesh. Genesis chapter 2 verse 24. Furthermore, Eve having been created from Adam's rib is considered to be Adam's clone or homunculus. Interesting to mention here that Eve bore 20 sets of twins in her lifetime. What is more, the Hierophant card depicting the set of Adam's is assigned to Roman numeral 5 and the Devil card depicting the set of Eve's is assigned to the Roman, Roman numeral 15, which gives us 5 plus 15 equals 20, the exact number of twin sets Adam and Eve bore. Moving forward, the Devil card is covered in a mostly black colour scheme and therefore shares an affinity with the dark twin, who sees the negative. The Devil card is also attributed to the Sephira Tiferet, which coincides with the heart chakra. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And in the Ten of Pentacles card, we have the two old men depicted as seeing eye to eye with one another. Just as the two ayins gaze upon each other in the mirror, reflecting upon each other's philosophies and understanding. Here, the, whole, the old man can be seen as looking into the mirror and reflecting upon his own spirit, coming to realise deeper understanding of all things in general after some time spent in deep thought. The title of this card has been unaltered and remains the original Roman numeral 10. In the Hebrew alphabet, the X associated with Tav meaning cross. The ancient symbol for Tav was an X. This is significant because Tav also happens to mean truth. Therefore, the old men in the Ten of Pentacles card are portrayed here as searching for their inner truth. The blue sapphire stone the two old men gaze upon represents the philosopher's stone, which is attributed to the pineal gland, aka third eye. When speaking of the stone in a physical sense, the most commonly mentioned properties are the ability to transmute base metals into gold or silver and the ability to heal all forms of illness and prolong the life of any person who consumes a small part of the philosopher's stone diluted in wine. Other mentioned properties include creation of perpetually burning lamps, transmutation of common crystals into precious stones and diamonds reviving old dead plants, creation of flexible or malleable glass, or the creation of a clone or homunculus, which refers to the creation of a mini-me, of oneself similar to Gollum. This cloning aspect parallels the concept of twins portrayed within these three cards. Legend says Raziel wrote his book, 
the Sefer Reziel ha ha Malaka on sapphire tablets. According to rabbinical Judaism from the Midrash and the Talmud, God wrote the first set of Ten Commandments on sapphire tablets, according to Exodus chapter 24, verse 10. And they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet, as it were, a pavement of sapphire stone, like the very heaven for clearness. ECV in brackets. The Talmud also claims that the emerald tablets of Toph were actually made of sapphire. The hierophant helps one seize the positive. The devil suggests you refrain from focusing on the negative and atone for your sins. The Ten of Pentacles reinstates the importance of looking within. Psalm 118 chapters 22 to 23. The stone, with, the stone which the builders refused is become the head stone of the corner. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvellous in our eyes. The moment we close our eyes and open up our heart is when we connect to the spirit. This concept is put into practice when you place two ayins together mirroring each other to form a shin. This shin is attributed to the third eye. This level of awareness is obtained in considered, is, is considered the Christ consciousness, which allows one to rise above the ego, permitting one to be in the world, world but not of the world. As you view the world of chaos from above, you are able to see the big picture. From this point of view, you realise there is order in the chaos and everything happens for a reason. Below is an amulet created by Archangel Raziel to help one defend themselves against the evil eye and deflect the critical judgment of others. Inadvertently, it allows you to see the positive within yourself and therefore clears out any negativity you are holding within you. The picture of the amulet taken from the Sefer Raziel Ha Malaka, the book of Raziel the Angel. This is the amulet. The method of using a mirror to reveal hidden secrets within certain illustrations also applies to the US $2 bill. Check out the $2 bill below which contains a hidden owl. The owl is named Moloch and is the same infamous owl displayed in the Bohemian Grove. Moloch can be traced back to biblical times. Moreover, the owl was placed on ancient Greek coins as well. Below is a pictograph depicting Adam and Eve with flames over their hearts that have an eye on them, twin flames. Thus, the heart is the key to bringing the two eyes together as one, as, they weigh, as the way to activate the third eye. This is how you raise the Kundalini and obtain higher awareness. Depicted in the middle of the Tree of Life are the two intertwined Kundalini serpents, which appear as the two strands of DNA. According to the Kabbalah, the root of the tree is located at the top. Therefore, one must gather the seed of desire from the top and draw it down to the bottom, where it manifests. This considered, the pictograph above portrays the wish-making formula. Allow me to explain. Notice there is an eye in the direct centre that separates the two portions of the Kundalini serpents where the top half is the kundalini serpents being activated by joining Adam and Eve's two eyes together as one. The bottom half is the kundalini serpent passing through the ten sephira on the Kabbalah tree of life. The two halves portrayed here coincide with the two keys which are hidden within. And again, I'm just going to show you that 
image up close. These keys, once activated, enable one to manifest their desires, create prosperity and abundance. What we see depends mainly on what we look for. John Don. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine be... I'll start again. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Matthew chapter 6, verse 22. And that concludes chapter 8 and the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. And in next video, we will be discussing chapter 9, the Tarot Decoded, Raziel's Interpretation, New Extended Edition by Grant Isaac. Until next time, thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.